Hey YouTube, Donnie Smith here and welcome to the last video in the Integra series. In this video we're going to show you how we unmask this car, get it out of the shop, and then we're going to show you how to adjust a fender. Okay, before you just jump in there and start unmasking, there's something to consider. You know, did you get a bunch of runs? Is there a lot of dirt in it? Are you going to have to do a lot of buffing? Because if you are, a lot of times I will leave it masked. I might have to cut some access holes in the windows so I can see to, you know, get it backed out in the shop. But then I'll leave all this masked up. And what that'll do is whenever you're buffing all the polishes and compounds, you know, it'll prevent all that getting in your cracks and crevices and really make a lot faster cleanup when you go to clean it up. But in the case of this car, it came out pretty clean. Uh, we didn't have any runs, so we're just going to go ahead and unmask it. Now, to get that super mirror uh, look, you're going you're going, you know, to get like a show car. You will need to buff and polish, but you know, you got to think about this. This is a repair job, and the the goal is to make it invisible repair. You know, where it's not noticeable. So if we get this door and hood and the fender and we sand them out and polish them, make them look mirror, you know, show quality, well, that's not going to match the rest of the car. Because from, from the factory, you know, there are there is some orange peel. So we really don't want it to look, you know, a lot slicker in the car because that would be noticeable. So with this masking, it's very important. If you notice how I've been going around pushing back on the mask, just pushing it back away from the panel, and this will eliminate any problems that you may have, especially if the clear coat kind of bridged to the tape and you pull forward, you know, that might pull a chunk of clear with it. So always just push that tape back down. That makes a real nice mask job. Uh, you know, you can't really notice that it's even been painted there. You know, it does really, really good. But yeah, just be careful with that, though. Don't pull forward on that masking tape. So we're going around just getting all this uh, pushed down. Once we get it all pushed down in a way, you know, we can lift the hood and we can uh, start removing all the plastic. And we did use just plastic on this uh, job, but there, that can be a problem as well. You know, that can cause some problems if uh, you didn't follow the tips in that one video because I have seen it to where the air pressure hits that plastic and that plastic moves around and then some of that paint primer sealer or whatever you had might pop off and flake into the finish but if you keep this plastic pulled tight and uh, use that adhesion promoter you shouldn't have a problem but to be safe you might still outline it with some 12 or 18 inch paper and then put your plastic on that you know just to be safe All right, we've about got this unmasked, and I really like this part. You know, I love it whenever, you know, it's been in the booth, now it's painted, and didn't have no problems, you don't have to sand and buff, and now we can just get it out of the shop and get it ready. You know, it feels, uh, feels good. Now I'm just showing you here, there's a, a stop there that adjusts how high that window can go up and down. I don't know why it's loose on this one. We didn't need to loosen that. It must have previously been loose. But you can see how it moves up and down, and that determines how high the window can roll up so if your windows hitting the roof you know you need to lower that a little bit and now uh, a trick I'm showing you so you don't lose your nuts and bolts is just use a piece of tape put it over your uh, your socket there and then that pushes in and now you can wiggle it around and you're not going to drop it in the door when you're trying to get it in there to get that started so I am basically just going around reversing a lot of what I did, you know, the, the parts that I took off, the belt molding, you know, I'm putting that on. Uh, I've already got the side molding on, and I've got the door handle on. I'll get the mirror and put that on. And basically just uh, reversing the process of uh, what I did when I took everything off. Now on the fender, you know, there's going to be a little adjustment on that, and we'll go over that here in just a minute. So on this mirror, you know, it's got the wire that needs to plug in. So I'm going to feed it through the, the opening first. And then it's got three bolts on the back side that I'll have to screw on. But yeah, it's always a good feeling whenever you get something done and, and uh, you don't have a lot of buffing to do. Because that really does take a lot of time, you know, especially if you just did a complete paint job, you know, that is a lot of time. 
So what I'm doing now is I'm protecting this door because we're about to put the fender on. Last thing you want to do is uh, damage the, you know, one of the panels you just painted, then you'll be re redoing it again. So I'm getting some tape just to protect that edge in case I bump it a little bit, uh, installing the fender. Now I've got the fender, I'm going to put it on. And the way I put fenders on, I just set them on there, you know, kind of adjust them the, the best they can. And then I'm going to go through some steps to, you know, make the flushness right and make the body gaps right. So I've got it setting on there and then I'm going to get all the nuts and bolts and I'm going to go ahead and put them all in but only hand tight. You do not want to tighten anything at this time. So I've got a you know my label bag so I'm not looking for screws and things like that and that's important like in one of the previous videos you know talk about bag and tag. Now that's when that comes in handy. You go to putting it all back together, you know where everything's at. So I'm getting all those hand tight. And there's one in the bottom here, a couple more in the front. Now on these fenders, I'm going to get, like I said, they're all hand tight. And then I'm going to use paint sticks. Now they also have body gap gauges that you can use that measure them. But if you will make the gaps look about the same on both sides, you know, I'm using a paint stick to kind of get an idea of what the gap is there. And then that's how I will adjust this fender to the door. So we're we've got to adjust the fender to the door. So that's the area we're going to work on first. I'm going to work on this top edge, and this paint stick is going to help get the right gap width. And once I got the gap width, I can push that fender in and out to get the correct flushness. And then I'm going to tighten that upper bolt there, that one bolt, and get that tight, and that will hold it all in place. I can take the paint stick out and it will still be in place. So I'll have the correct gap, the correct flushness. And now I'll go to the bottom of the fender and adjust that. Same thing, I'll use a stick. And you gotta be careful, you don't wanna scratch the paint, so be careful with the paint sticks. But I'll go down there and adjust the flushness and I'll adjust the, uh, the gap on that and tighten that up. Now you have the fender adjusted to the door. And now the, all the front bolts, you know, you still wanna leave those loose. You know, so you can adjust it to the hood when you shut it. Now, a thing to keep in mind, you know, don't throw the fender on there and just open the door wide open. Because if it's too close, it's going to hit. It's going to ruin your paint. could dent it again. And the hood, you know, when you go to shut it, just don't, you know, shut it real hard and let it slam. Because if that fender's in too far, it's going to land on top of the fender. So always open your door slow until you see the adjustment's going to work. You know, the hood, you know, lower it real slow so that you can uh, kind of tell what's going to happen before, you know, two panels hit each other. And then once you have everything adjusted, the gaps look good, the flushness looks good, then you can go around and tighten the whole fender, tighten all the bolts and nuts and everything and make it secure. And... I don't have the footage, but you know, of course, gonna have to put the front bumper on, the headlights, and all that, and then we will be finished with this job. So here's a quick photo of what it looked like before, and one after, or almost after. We still got a little bit to do, but so as I've mentioned in one of the other videos before, uh, this fit this footage was lost for a long time, and I found it. But this is all I found. I uh, don't know what happened to the the part where I'm putting the front bumper on the headlights. But you know, basically, if if you're wondering, just go back to those videos where I removed them, and uh, you know, just kind of reverse the process. But I was really glad to find this much of it where we get it painted and clear coated and basically completed. Well, that wrapped up this video and this video series. If you liked the video, be sure and give us a thumbs up, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed, be sure and subscribe to us. And remember, if something's worth doing, do your best and have a blast doing it. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you in the next video.